Mr. Eversley, please. Do you have an appointment? Yes. Uh, who should I say is calling? His 11 o'clock appointment. There's a gentleman here who... Yes, of course. I'll show you to Mr. Everly's office. Thank you. This way, please. Thank you. You're welcome. May I take your hat and coat? Thank you. Good morning. I'm Carl P. Evans. How do you do? This is the executive vice president of our company, Mr. Peter Bowden. Please sit down, Mr. Cutting. I think it's fairly obvious that Mr. Boland disapproves of your presence here. I don't disapprove, I resent it. I resent your calling him, and I'm against any connection this man may have with our company. I told you I'd make it a condition of his employment that he in no way infers he's even retained by us. You trust him? Not completely. All right, then. Why? Because mother... our men, your men, haven't turned up one shred of evidence in a year. Because there's nothing to turn up. I don't believe it. And I don't think you really believe it either, Peter. Have you ever heard of Kurt Verlaine? I've heard the name. He lives in Switzerland. He deals in oil, tankers, munitions. You name it. 18 months ago, two of his ships were lost at sea. Four insurance underwriters, of which we are one, paid out a total of $15 million. We all paid because we couldn't find a reason for not paying. But none of us liked the situation. The case was closed. What's well, changed? Just one thing. We all felt that the key, if there was a key, was a man by the name of Walter Green. He worked for Valayan. Last December, he was flying up to see him, and his plane was lost in a storm in the mountains. This morning, some skiers found the wreckage. They'll start digging it out tomorrow morning. Now, when they find Green, they may find other things. 
papers, records, I don't know. You could be there tomorrow morning. There's a plane for Zurich at nine tonight. I'll read this. I'll let you know. Our investigators don't carry guns. Do you carry a gun? Uh-huh. Can I see it? No. Why not? I wouldn't be carrying it. You would. Cutting. If you do decide to take this job, look out for one man in that setup. Matt Wilson. Have any of your own investigators had any um, unusual experience on this? One man did, but it had nothing to do with the case. I see. How did I? It was an automobile accident. Police said it was his own fault. Why should he have asked a question like that? I never said he wasn't a good investigator. I just don't like the way he works. found the pilot and the co-pilot, but there is a passenger too. Uh, what are the chances of finding him? If he if he is there, they find him. Thank you. But you keep looking. Of course we keep looking, but I don't believe we'll find him. Why? Because we've covered the area in which the body should be. Have you seen the wreck, Mr. Wilson? No. The way the plane crashed, a passenger, if he was in the back of the plane, might have survived and walked away. If he did, what village could he have reached on well, foot? there's Ria and there's Marville. Marville is father, but the man running away from a plane crash in a storm wouldn't know that. But then what happened to him? What happened if he's alive? Maybe he's got amnesia. I'd like to examine the wreckage, if you don't mind. Oh, of course. You'll see what I mean about the possibility of a man surviving. I'm on duty every day of the year, except three weeks in August. December 5th. Does it have to do with a man? Yes. A man who said he had an accident, an automobile accident? Mm, he might have said that. What's your question? What happened to him? First, he pointed out on the map where the accident happened. <laughs> then he gave me his name and address in Zurich. And then he hired Johan, he owns the taxi here, to take him to Zurich. Why do you remember him so well? There was no automobile accident. The name was false, and there was no such address in Zurich. <laughs> it is easy to remember. <laughs> uh, do you mind if I go in here for a while? Why? Uh, there are two men coming in I'd rather not see. Are they looking for you? They don't know I'm here. All right. But close the door. Maybe I don't want you to hear what they are going to say. Good morning, 
I wonder if you might be able to help me. I'm interested in something that um, happened last December. Well, I'm on duty here every day of the year, except three weeks in August. Did you see or hear anything about uh, an injured man in this area around uh, December the 5th? A man who might have been in an automobile accident? Yes. I got him a taxi and he left. Does a taxi driver live here in town? Mm hmm just down the street. There's a sign. It says, taxi. Oh, thank you very much. Excuse me. Yes? Why are you interested in this man, too? You sound as though somebody else has been interested in him. That's right. Who? Me. Oh. Uh, there was a plane crash. A passenger, we assumed, was killed. Uh, might not have been. Or the crash on the glacier. Yes. Of course, I should have thought of that before. Well, that explains everything. Uh, almost everything. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> they didn't ask about you, so I didn't say anything. Do you uh, know anything else that I didn't ask him? Yes. What? Johann dropped that fellow off at the railway station in Zurich. It's a dead end, but they have to wait 40 minutes to find out because Johann just took some tourists down the valley. Thanks for the head start. Tell me, how are you going to find a man in a big city like Zurich? I'll start with last year's telephone directory. <laughs> That's so simple. But if it was the same fellow, why didn't he say who he was? Why didn't he talk about the air crash? Why did he lie? See? It's not so simple. Mr. Green made soul rest in peace at the front apartment upstairs. And you say he never had any visitors? Just the girl. I see. Just the girl. Uh-huh. Miss Laurent. Miss Dominique Laurent. Of course. His secretary. Part-time secretary. You had her telephone number? Her telephone number and her address. It must still be in the little book. I wonder if I could trouble you for a telephone number and address. No trouble at all. I have it right here. Now, let me see. It should be here. Oh, here it is. Ah, see? Miss Dominique Laurent. You will probably find Miss Laurent at the King's Club, at Stossihofgasse. She goes there a great deal. Thank you very much. Are you connected with the other man who was asking for her? You mean a tall fellow? Uh, sort of needs a haircut? Yes, yes, that's the one. When was he here? <laughs> Not more than ten minutes ago. Uh, yes, I am connected with him. Thank you very much. Excuse me. Hi, 
everything. Oh, hello, Victor. Hi. Would you like a drink? Uh, just coffee. Miss. Uh, two coffees, one cognac. Yes, uh, sir. I'll have a cognac, too. Thank you. I'm trying to get some information about a man you knew, Walter Green. He's dead. I know. What's left? He may not be dead. You're good looking. I'm what? Good looking. Thank you. Did you ever... Are you married? No. There was nothing between Walter Green and me. I did some typing for him now and then. Just expense accounts. You got my name from the landlady in his building. And the landlady in my building said that you'd probably find me here. Did you ever Green mention a man named Matt Wilson? I met him with Walter about a year ago. Have you seen him since? Wilson or Green? Wilson. Yes, I uh, saw Mr. Wilson about uh, three seconds ago. Three what? Where? There. Just before he died, Walter told me that the only thing he was afraid of in the whole world was a man named Matt Wilson. And then he died. And now, maybe he didn't die. And here comes Mr. Wilson again. You move fast. Is that brandy? Yes. Make it another. Well, what did you find out? That she met you once and that Green was afraid of you. I know. Everybody who works for me is afraid of me. I don't know why. Who are you? My name is Matt Wilson. I'll know who you are in a couple of hours. You can save me the trouble. Take the trouble. What was Green in your organization? An investigator like you. Why do you carry a gun? It's more effective than a hammer. A score. Huh? Oh, score, score. Can you answer the big question? If Green did walk away from the crash, why did he disappear? Why did he come back here and go into hiding? Why do you think he's hiding here? If he wanted to hide, why wouldn't he go to uh, Istanbul? The only city a man can hide in is his own. He knows what clothes to wear, what friends to contact. He doesn't speak with a foreign accent. He doesn't stand out. You try to do that in uh, Istanbul, and he'll pick you up in 20 minutes. I never thought of it that way. Well, Greenwood, he worked for me. I don't know what your angle is, but uh, I have a job to do. And until it's finished, I don't want you stumbling in my way. Sounds like an order. I know it goes against your grain, but it's practical. Do it. Do I have a choice? Yes, but don't take it. It's cool. Hmm? It's cool. Now, what are you going to do? I'm going to go back to my hotel and wait for Walter Green to call me. Call you. I think he'll want to find me before Wilson finds him. And um, how would Walter find you? If he calls and asks, tell him I'm at the Hotel Storkin. And whom should he ask for? Room 236. What makes you so sure that Walter would ever even have heard of you? I'm counting on him being just that smart because he worked for Wilson. You're not only cute, you're clever. Keep it. I like your tie. I can say that this woman was angezogen. It was just from this world. Großartig, großartig. Bitte schön. Do you want a taxi, sir? No. Do uh, you know a nice, small hotel where I can get a room tonight? Hmm. Yes, at the Hotel County. Just go to the end of the street, turn right, past the fountain, turn left, and right in the middle of the block, you'll find the hotel. Thank you.
Excuse me. Sorry, sir. May I have my key, please? What's your room number? Uh, 38. 38. Oh, and uh, uh, wake me at 8 o'clock and coffee at 8.15. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, 38 at 8 o'clock and coffee at 8.15. just came in. I, uh... Other one in 38? Yes. I want to know his name and where he came from. I have to look on the registration card. I haven't seen that gentleman before, so I don't know his name. You know, they come and go so quickly, and I only work at night, so I don't know everyone. <laughs> Nobody's registered in room 38. The room is supposed to be empty. I call it. Only the key to room 38. Stand up. Now put your gun in your pants pocket. Take your hand out. I don't think you'll shoot. No, I won't kill you, but your leg will never be the same. Now walk over to your car and drive over here and get your friend. You know I'll get you for this. Yeah. Excuses, Mr. Wilson. I lost him. I didn't think you'd hold on to him. Cover the girl. She'd lead us back to him. Yes, sir. Hello? Yes? Oh, Dominique. That's all right. I wasn't sleeping. You were right. Walter Green did call. He'd like to see you at uh, the railroad station, track three, as soon as you can be there. 
At the railroad station. Uh, I'll be there in 20 minutes. Okay, I'll see you there. Uh, Dominic, wait a minute. Uh, do you say something? Uh, yes, uh, they'll, uh, they'll have somebody watching you. Oh, why would they want to... Oh, I know what you mean, because I was seen speaking to you. They'll have me covered, tailed, wherever I go. Tailed? Oh, well, don't worry, I'll shake them. You will? How? I'll go in and out of different places. At one o'clock in the morning? I'll go around corners, things like that. They won't want me to know that they're tailing me, and that means I'll be able to... Uh, suppose they don't care if you know they're tailing you. Uh, what did you say? Suppose they don't care if you know. That's not the way it's done. Yeah. Uh, wait a minute, let me think. I don't have a fire escape. Uh, uh, there must be some uh, boat harbors on the lake. Well, there's a, there's a little dock just 50 steps from the front of my house. Fine. Um, uh, be there in 45 minutes. I can be there sooner. I don't want you there sooner. Yeah, well, if I'm there, I can help you. Dominic, uh, I can meet Green alone. You really don't need to be there, but if you really... I'll be there 45 minutes. slowly toward the steps. When you hear me start the engine, run down the steps and jump on board. Not that boat, this one. They're both the same. Take those damn glasses off and get in here. Yes, what happened? Well, the girl did meet him when you said, Mr. Wilson. I followed her and... Uh... I know, he lost you again. It was a freak. He was on a... Don't worry about it. You'll never hold on to him if he wants to lose you. Stay on the line. What calls did Cutting get tonight? When? All right. How far are you from the railroad station? Five or six minutes. That's where he's going. If he's going to the railway station, I can be there ahead of him. Good. Move. Yes, sir. <laughs> your voice and don't look surprised at anything I might tell you. You understand? Yes. Now, would you like me to talk or would you prefer to ask questions? Just a few questions first. Please. Do you know whether the ships had sank or were actually sabotaged? They were sabotaged. <laughs> Can you prove it? Yes, I did it. What? <laughs> 
course, I should have realized that after I had disposed of these ships, they'd have to dispose of me. Then the plane you were on was also sabotaged. Oh, yes. Mr. Wilson did that personally. How many men were killed on those ships? 28. Why'd you contact me? I don't want to die. What do you got to offer? There are four insurance companies involved with these ships. I expect you're working for one of them, but just in case you aren't. Here are the names of the companies and men to contact. I've documented my activities. I can show them the sworn affidavits when they get here. You think you can trust me? I think so. Most people are basically honest. That's why Mr. Verlaine can be such a big man. Almost everyone is basically honest, and he is not. What about the police? You did kill 28 men. The police of what country? These explosions, or crimes if you prefer, occurred on the high seas. These ships were registered in comic opera countries. Legally, they're the only ones who have jurisdiction. You see, Mr. Blaine operates outside the laws of any country. He's between countries, so to speak. And the insurance companies will protect me and reward me, understand, since they'll get their money back. My testimony will do that for them. But it'll also hang you. And Wilson and Verlaine. In what country? Well, 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 what do you mean, what country? There were 28 men murdered. Yeah. It'll take you a couple of days to get these men over here. I'll call you. You forgot your suitcase. It's not his. He stole off one of the racks, so he'd look less conspicuous. Please hurry. How do you do that trick? Hmm? That trick, the standing there, swirling your coffee and discussing the murder of 28 men. He and I are interested in something else. The 28 men don't matter. They don't matter. That's right. You probably read about the newspaper at the time it happened and forgot it because it didn't interest you then. It doesn't interest me now. Well, it's a little different now. Only because you know the man who killed him. Yes, that's right. And because you've been helping him for the last six months. Green didn't call you tonight, you called him. I said I expected him to contact me. Well, not this fast. Your hotel is just a few blocks from here. I live on the other side of town. I can get home, all right. Well, let me pay for the taxi. You don't have to do that. I'd rather. I would rather that you didn't. Can you make a better cup of coffee than the one we just had? Anybody can make a better cup of coffee than we just had. I didn't ask anybody.
try, you can tell me if it's better. Coffee's ready. Coffee? Oh, that's what you said you wanted. Oh, yeah. Mr. Vivian isn't the only dishonest man in the world. Among us liars, he's the richest. <sighs> yeah, but, um, can he get a good cup of coffee? I'm just calling to tell you that I loathe and despise you and everything that you stand for. And what time are you taking me to dinner tonight? Eight o'clock. What's your name? A secret agent room number 236. I'll tell you when you pick me up. <laughs> You're a dirty son of a thing. I'm in four to eight. Come up, have breakfast with me. All right. What should I order for you? Uh, uh just uh, toast and coffee. Right. why you're tired. Is that why I'm tired? I hate jets. With the old planes, you had dinner, a couple of drinks, got into your berth, slept eight hours, arrived rested and ready to work. Now it takes me oh, two to three days to adjust after the trip. Uh, where's the milk? Hmm? Milk. Oh, I've used yours. Want me to order some? No. Want to work for me? No. Why? I don't like the way you fire people. How'd you find out who I am? How would you have done it? The only people interested in Green, besides you and Valet, are the four insurance companies you swindled. With the right connections, it shouldn't take more than a few hours to find out which one called me in. You see, you and I think alike. No, we don't. I just know the way you think. You've got a bad reputation. Mm -hmm. Amongst other things, you've killed five men. 
line of duty and all that, but it scares off the big companies. Bad for their image to have a man like you around, unless the stakes are big enough. Then they call you in the back way. I know about me. Tell me about you. Is that a raw egg? Hmm. Have one every morning. Good for my virility. Yeah, if you're a chicken. Cutting. Did you ever think about um, how the big fortunes of the world got started? I think about it every day, usually at breakfast. Those men were rough. Killers, most of them. Not with their own bare hands, of course. They started their own wars. Railroad wars. Oil wars. They started real wars, so they could sell to both sides. They went in murderers, came out social figures with fancy titles. The only difference is money, you know that. Mm -hmm. Today it's different. Today they call it a patriotic war. Or an ideological war for the protection of small nations and all that. But what they are really fighting and murdering each other for is the right to a gasoline station and a bulletproof limousine. If there wasn't any money or oil or minerals in those places, nobody would even remember the name of the countries we are trying to uh, protect. Oh, you're a philosopher, Wilson, a real homely philosopher. Now, Kurt Valain, he's the new breed, modern. His ships are registered in countries where you buy cabinet ministers for $1,000 a piece. His oil leases are in tax-free companies. Munitions are bought and sold through free port cities. No taxes, no risks, no rules. Interested? Fascinated. You played cool, I like that. So do I. When did you kill Walter Green? Why do you think he's dead? Yesterday, you're telling me to stay out of your way. Today, you're not worried about me anymore. I wasn't worried about you yesterday. You could make money working for me. I'll think about it. Thanks for the breakfast. The coffee was cold. What are you going to do now? Well, like you said, you and I think alike. You tell me what I'm going to do now. Uh, hello. Dominic? Yes. What time is it? It's 10 o'clock. In the morning? Uh-huh. That's sweet. You couldn't wait until tonight to speak to me. You're burning with love and passion and romance. Shut up. You are romantic. I knew it. What's Walter Green's address? Uh, I thought you were going to wait for him to call you. I don't think I've got time. I think he's dead. What? How? I don't know. Oh, uh, did you see him? No. Who told you he's dead? Nobody. I don't understand. I'll explain what I see you. Do we meet at his place or will you pick me up? Um, I'll pick you up in 20, um... Uh, 25 minutes. I'll be downstairs. Walter's dead. My German's not very good. What does this say? It's about a man who was found killed this morning at the railroad station. The police can't tell whether it was suicide or an accident. Go on. Uh, the, body, the man had no identification on him, but the police hope to establish it very shortly. Yeah, that's what I thought it said. Do you know where the city morgue is? No. Ask him. Well, what makes you think it was Walter? How many men do you know who walk around without any identification on them at all?
No. Excuse me, my name is Roof. Inspector Roof of the Zurich Police. This is my identification. How do you do, Inspector Roof? May I see your identification? Of course. Cutting, Richard Cutting. You entered Switzerland on the 5th. That was yesterday. Yes. You entered Switzerland yesterday. The 5th. Thank you. Uh, you're not related. Uh, no, but I don't have my passport with me. Uh, I live in Zurich. I see, but you're not Swiss, you are English. American. I see. You are interested in the body of the man we found in the railway station. I'm interested in finding my cousin who disappeared about a month ago. Disappeared in Switzerland? The last picture postcard we got from him was from Switzerland. I see. Uh, his name was also Cutting? John Cutting. John Cutting. He was not the man you saw just now. Uh, it wasn't Cousin John, no. Then if it wasn't Cousin John, there is no reason why you should know him. No. Of course, why should you know him? You don't know who the man is, Miss... Uh... Laurent. Miss Laurent. That is a French name. Yes. Oh, you know who the man is? No. I mean, uh, uh, yes, French. No, I don't know who the man was. I see. Uh, did you know Cousin John? You think he's dead. I don't know. You said did. Past tense. I'm sorry. Do you know Cousin John? I never had the pleasure of his company. <laughs> <laughs> uh, would you like me to uh, look for your cousin? Mr. Cutting. Uh, if I don't uh, find him myself, I'll call on you if you don't mind. I don't mind. Please call on me any time. You're very kind. Uh, not at all. Perhaps if we work together, we may be able to find your cousin. I'll go back now, but please don't hesitate to call me. Uh, Inspector Roof. R-U-F. F-F. Two F's. F-F. I'll remember. Any time at all. Are you smoked? I don't. I'm, I'm nervous. He knows that we're lying. Of course he does. What's he gonna do now? Check the police files, make certain that uh, no uh, cousin John ever entered Switzerland and give me enough rope and hope I'll make a case for him. What are you gonna do? Go to Green's apartment. Do you know how to get there? You told the cab driver, Bergenstrasse 48. I don't have a key. I'll manage. You don't inhale. I don't smoke much. Gonna pick the lock or Jimmy the door? They must have found what they were looking for. There wasn't anything to find. They just wanted to make sure. And they made sure. What about that paper that Walter spoke of? The affidavit? They didn't find anything here. What makes you say that? I had to look in too many places. You mean the affidavit is still in existence? If it ever existed, he probably thought he had time to write one, Scott. Watch your head. What are you going to do? Nothing. What do you mean, nothing? The story's over. It's like everybody thought six months ago. Walter Queen is dead. 
But Walter wasn't dead six months ago. Walter was murdered. This morning. I know. Well, doesn't that make any difference? So? Well, I don't know. Well, neither do I. But Walter was murdered. Uh-huh. And you know that Wilson did it, or at least he ordered it done. Mm. And you know the lane's behind the whole thing. Uh-huh. Will you stop humoring me? I didn't say anything. Well, say something. What do you want me to say? I don't know. Or do? I don't know. Neither do I, neither does anybody. What you're talking about is for the police. Respect the rule. Will he do anything? No. Well, why not? Because he can't prove anything. Like Green said, Belen can be a big man because most people are honest in this world, and he's not. That's a big edge. You're not honest. You make that sound like a compliment. Would you like a drink? Yes, I would. Concierge, please. Uh, this is Mr. Cutting in room 236. What flights do you have going to New York today? Right. Yes, sir? What, what do you have? Oh, I haven't had breakfast yet. Well, have some. Just coffee, please. Uh, Bloody Mary. Yes, sir. No, that's too soon. What's the next one? Oh, yes, that's good. Uh, get me a seat on that flight, will you? Yes, yes, I have my ticket. Thank you. Why don't you fight Belen? Why should I? Well, somebody paid you to come here. Maybe they'd pay you to fight Valet. Somebody paid me to try to save him a lot of money. And if Wilson and Valet hang side by side for the murder of poor Walter, nobody's going to be ten cents richer or poorer. Nobody's going to care. It's just a question of money. Always a question of money. And the 28 men? It's a detail. I guess if there's enough money in it, the lives of 28 men can just be a detail. Look, if you buy a stolen bicycle, you're an accessory to a crime. But if you pay $100 million to a degenerate who murdered his brother for the oil rights to a country, that's a smart deal. And nobody's going to arrest you for it. I don't believe you. Good. You live happier that way. Would you like to trade in here? Just uh, put it there, please. Yes, sir. Is it a Bloody Mary? Yes, sir. Get me one. Yes, sir. I'm sorry you're leaving. Ah, it would be nice to be missed. You could make a lot of money with me. Yeah. You two go so well together. Why don't you take his offer? Excuse me. He drinks raw eggs for breakfast. You pretend to be so ruthless. But you have a conscience. Haven't you? Don't tell anybody to depend on it. Excuse me. You're going straight back to New York? You have my flight number. I am beginning to understand what you were trying to explain to me. You tell me if I'm right. Walter wasn't murdered because his testimony would have actually put someone in prison. But his testimony would have been very embarrassing. I mean, it might even have affected Mr. Valayne's financial holdings. Now, that's the important thing, right? Shut up. But Mr. Wilson knows everything I'm saying. I'm sure he knows everything that we've done. What you don't know, I mean, both of you don't know, is that Walter's affidavit does exist. Now, I didn't know that's what it was when he gave it to me, but of course, that's what it must be. She's lying. It wouldn't be legal evidence, though, would it? I mean, something that Inspector Ruff could act on. But it would be just as embarrassing as Walter's live testimony. In fact, now that he's dead, it'd probably be even more effective. Little Dominique is shocked because she's come in contact with death and violence, and now she's pretending... Little Dominique that... isn't pretending anything. Little Dominique knows perfectly well that whoever killed Walter would kill someone else if he had the same reasons. Isn't that true, Mr. Wilson? Probably. She's bluffing. Of course I am. There isn't a chance in a thousand I'm telling the truth. One chance in a whole thousand. I just wonder if Mr. Wilson can take that chance. And <clears throat> say, may I use your phone? She's 
She's lying. Sure she is. She hasn't got any papers because he didn't write any. I think you're right. Like she said, there isn't a chance in a thousand. You think so? Thank you. I want you to leave her alone. I know. What are you going to do? You know, one of the reasons I like you, Cutting, is that we are the same type of guy. In our own way, we think you like you and I. You tell me what I'm going to do. Is this the concierge? Uh, yes. I'm calling for uh, Mr. Cutting in room 236. He'll not be taking that plane tonight. Would you cancel that reservation? That's right. Thank you. You think I owe it to you to stay here and protect you because I uh, kissed you goodnight last night? Oh, that's sweet. Kiss me goodnight last night. That's uh, delicate. I'll be on that plane tonight, Dominique. You're a lot like Inspector Ruff. He knows everything that's happened, and he can't do anything about it. And there isn't anything that you can do about it. There isn't anything you can do anymore. And there isn't anything that Mr. Wilson has to do anymore. That's right. Well, I changed that now. You picked a beautiful way to do it. But if Mr. Wilson doesn't believe me, then nothing will happen. But if he does, then he has to make the next move. And now, if I have learned my lessons correctly, I don't think you've got any choice except to stay and see what happens. You've been a very good pupil. What do you get out of this? Besides the, uh, thrill of it all. Nothing. All right. You've shown me. I was going to say a new world, but I guess it's not. I don't like what you've shown me. I don't like men who think like Wilson and Green and Valet and little men who make their own little laws. They're all big laws. I don't like the way you think. I don't like the things that you seem to be right about all the time. Maybe I can do something about that. <clears throat> Does that sound uh, a little melodramatic to you? Green never discussed Valeria or Wilson with you? Walter never discussed his business with me. He would mention them now and then, but he never discussed them. He must have told you why he was hiding for six months. Yes. Um, no, not hiding. I knew that there were people he didn't want to see. He didn't want them to know that he was here. Well, in a way, I guess I knew that he was hiding. But I didn't think of it as real hiding. Like hiding, hiding. For his life, I mean. A green was too smart to sit in a hole uh, for six months without some kind of plan. How'd he live? Where'd he get money? Well, he had a bank account. How'd he draw money? Walter Green was officially dead. He couldn't just write a check. Well, he had an account code number. They are completely anonymous here. Not completely. The bank knows who it belongs to. Well, I know that, but they never got that information. You know Green's number? No, but I know Wilson's. You know... The secret code number to Matt Wilson's private account? Yes. It happened in a funny way. It was really very funny. Make me laugh. Well, Walter bought me a, a twin sweater set for my birthday. You know, it's two sweaters. No, you put I, one over I know, I know. And I'm born on March the 10th. I'm a Pisces. Fine. Now, just tell me the number. Walter wrote down on a card, 10 for the day and 3 for the month. In Europe, they do it the reverse of what we do. We usually do the no, month I first. Know, I know about that. Just please, go on. 
He wrote down ten and three. And then he started to tease me about the year that I was born. Because he thought that I wouldn't want anyone to know my age. But I don't care about that. I really couldn't care less about that. So I wrote down the year. And then he began to laugh. He said it was very funny because he had spent almost five months trying to get Mr. Wilson's secret bank code number. And my birthday, written down like that, is Mr. Wilson's secret number. <laughs> well, you see how funny it was. I mean, well, all the while that he was looking, I had the same number. I mean, it was my birthday. What's the number? Ten for the day and three for the month, 19... F You'll know how old I am. If you don't help me, you may not get any older. 3 10 I'm 24 years old. <clears throat> what bank? It's the same as uh, Walters. The Burger Cantonal Investment and Trust Bank. Gesellschaft. That means incorporated. In, in England, it's limited. And in France... Why did he want to know Wilson's code number? I don't know. All right. Let's go. Where are we going? To get you some life insurance. I don't understand. You told Wilson you had Green's affidavit. That makes you a threat to Wilson. I know it. If you have to, you give up the affidavit, and then you're no longer a threat. You're not in danger. But I can't give it up. I don't have it. I was lying. You knew that. I'll get it. But you can't just get an affidavit just like that. It has to be officially notarized. Months ago, witnessed. I know. Signed by Walter Green and sealed. I know. How can you get a document like that now? How? Like I've been telling you, buy it. Buy it? Buy it. <laughs> I would like to have a paper notarized. Household. Maker. Yes. What is it you want notarized? It's uh, just a statement that I agree to represent one of the import-export firms in your country. I can read. Yes. building on the river. You know the one I mean? Yes, I know the place. I'd like you to meet me there. Why? To notarize another document. Can you get away for a few minutes during office hours? Sometimes I can. What time do you finish work? Six o'clock. I'll go there now and wait for you. And don't forget the red sticker and the seal. I'll wait for you until a few minutes past six. I don't think I'll be able to bring the seal. Don't bother to come without it. I'm not paying you five hundred dollars to hold hands with you. <laughs> not that pretty. You're smoking again. I am. Yeah. Uh, is it good to meet you? I think you will. You sound pretty sure of yourself. You say that as though you resent it. I resent what you're sure about. Bribing people, committing minor crimes. Protecting your life. I'm sorry. I'm nervous. And a little frightened. And hungry. You haven't eaten all day. I know. Want me to get a sandwich for you? I'd rather save it for a good dinner tonight. That's a promise.
Well, I guess I shouldn't be here when your partner in crime arrives. He's a pretty nervous fellow already. I'll go back to my place and I'll change. Uh, I'd rather you wait for me at the hotel. Because I said I was frightened or because you are? It's safer at the hotel. If I hadn't talked to you, I'd have taken that plane tonight. Would you have gone anyway and left me alone? Yes. I think I could have talked you out of it. Uh-huh. Now who's sure of his help? Well, I'm on more familiar ground. It'll only make you nervous. Oh, but I am nervous. Really? You know, what I'm doing is highly irregular. Criminal, you know. I've never done such a thing before in my life. No one ever asked you to before. What happens if this comes back on me and Sign I... Sign anybody's name. I don't care whose signature's on the bottom. You don't care? No. Ah, then I can put the name of my colleague. Then they won't ask me anything. They'll ask him. Then if there's any trouble... Stop one. enjoying it so much, I'll cut the price. But you said $500. You showed me the envelope with $500 in it. I, a man must have his principles. All right, all right, $500. Just sign it. Well, goodbye. Mr. Cutting, your key. Miss Laurent is upstairs. She was, but then the telephone operator gave her the message from you when she left. Message from me? <laughs> yes. What did I say? You said for her to go to her apartment and you would meet her there. When did she leave? Oh, 15, 20 minutes ago. You did give that message to the operator, didn't you, Mr. Cutting? Sure. Uh, but do you have a telephone I could use? Certainly. That one, please. Thank you. Uh, my name is Cutting. Two four. Excuse me. Mesdames. Restaurant. Mais naturellement, Monsieur. Bon. Vous pourriez prendre un taxi, mais c'est pas loin. À droite.
don't scream, my darling. Yes. Good morning. I am the manager of the hotel. Hello. I received a message for you from Mr. Wills, from Mr. Valens Chalet. Yes. He said to tell you that he received your message and then he will meet you at the top of the cable car station at one o'clock. Thank you. Do you know where that is? I'll find it. I hope you enjoy your stay with us. I hope so too. me to. I didn't expect you to come up here. You should have kept your men out of the middle. I got on the plane to New York. You're right. It's one mistake I made. You made more than one. What do you want, Cutting? Why'd you come up here? I want to talk to Valayan. What about? Him, aren't you? The ski? No. You should try it. It's a great sport. Do you uh, make the appointment or I do it without you? I don't think you can do it without me. You said you made one mistake with me already. Are you getting anxious? Can't quite figure what you're playing for, Cutting. Set in on the meeting with Valayan. It'll explain everything. I'll send a car for you. Four o'clock. Ich. 
The official decision is that she slipped in the bathtub, which caused her to strike her head, and that death was instantaneous and accidental. Of course, it would have been very difficult for Walter Green to have slipped accidentally under the wheels of the train. But again, of course, he might possibly have chosen this method to commit suicide. I said possibly. Anything is possible. Even in Switzerland, where everything is so orderly and precise, it is possible that a man might decide to take the law into his own hands, which would be disorderly and imprecise. That's you. On the other hand, it might make it impossible because of the precision of the laws in our country to act as one might wish to act. That's me. So me, uh, I, that is, will permit you to carry on in your own way up to a point. There's an expression which I heard from your country, which is not flattering, but it is amusing. It goes, never trust a cop. You never know when he might go straight. Mr. Cutting, Mr. Verlaine. Good afternoon, Mr. Cutting. This is my daughter, Cynthia. How do you do? How do you do? I'll leave you gentlemen to your business. I told Matt that he ought to have asked you to lunch, but by the time I knew of our appointment, it was too late. Another time, perhaps. Thank you. This is your first trip here? Yes. It's quite beautiful, isn't it? Yes, it is. I never tire of it. Change of light in the valleys and on the peaks. Do they make you feel small? Mm. No. They make me feel small sometimes. I'm not trying to be bigger than they are. Oh, I see what you mean. You mean that I'm competing with them and you're not. Something like that. This is quite interesting. Can I offer you a drink? Uh, no, no, thank you. Oh, do sit down, please. Thank you. Matt told me that you were a very unusual man, but he didn't seem to know what you really wanted to speak to me about. It's a very simple request. I want Matt Wilson. What do you mean by that? I want to hang him for murder. Why? Because he committed murder. A man who worked for you, Walter Green. I see. Were there any witnesses? One who saw the whole thing. Who was that? Me. That's a lie. You're right. What do you want, Mr. Cutting? Wilson. Nothing else. When did this murder take place? Early yesterday morning. Matt was here at that time. He'd driven up from Zurich. You don't want to say that. Don't I? No. Why? The strength of your empire is its secrecy. No books, no rules, no records, nothing to explain. For the same reasons, very difficult to defend. How, how would you defend a rumor that, uh, let's say, your oil leases are being confiscated? How could you produce a contract, and to whom would you show it? A single rumor might reduce your holdings by, say, uh, 20, 30 percent. It might even crack your whole interlocking financial empire. I don't know. It's an interesting theory, Mr. Cutting. <laughs> you know, he's right, Matt. You realize that? Absolutely right. Up to a point. If someone had the time and money to invest, it would be inconvenient for me. But that's all, Mr. Cutting. Just inconvenient. 
and I can assure you that my interlocking financial empire would remain intact. It took Walter Green almost five months to get Matt Wilson's personal account number. I've written it down and the name of the bank. It shouldn't take you more than a few hours to learn all about that account. Don't get up, Matt. I know the way out. We all make mistakes, Mr. Cutting. But I've never made any big ones. You couldn't bring yourself to do those sort of things. Hang a man on perjured testimony. Release all those lies. He could do it. I could do it. You can't do it. This is our first meeting, Mr. Vallejan. I'd say we have one more to go. How long are you planning to stay, Mr. Cutting? Not very long, I'm afraid. Pity. It can be very nice here this time of year. I hope to stay longer next time. Good. Goodbye, Miss Valen. Good day, sir. Five minutes. All right, but don't forget. I'll look forward to it. Uh. Yes, please tell me why. Oh, I'm the 
This is Kurt Verlaine speaking, Mr. Cutting. I was expecting a call. What time is it? I wish to speak to you. Good. I have Matt Wilson there. I prefer to speak to you alone. I'd rather he was there. Very well. Come to my chalet immediately. First, I'm going to take a shower. I'm going to have breakfast. And then I'll come to your chalet immediately. <coughs> Doesn't that seem to make sense to you, Inspector? I would say that there was a party going on last night. There's two or three parties every night in the hotel. Yes, a party must have been in progress, and this man, obviously under the influence of alcohol, stepped off the balcony to take a walk. Then it was an accident? That is my decision. It was an accident. Write it down. Case closed. I've never waited two hours for any man in my life. You also said you never misjudged a man in your life. What was Matt's explanation about what you learned? I've not asked him for an explanation. I prefer it be discussed now between the three of us. I prefer to discuss it privately without him. You told me you wanted Matt here. I wanted him here because I wanted him to know that we're talking about him. Now I don't want him here. You can't give orders in my house, Mr. Cutting. If I'm being rude, Mr. Villay, and ask me to leave, I'm sure Matt could give you ten simple, honest explanations without my being here. But any explanation would leave some shadow of doubt. In a strange way, I'm the only one who can clear the air between you. Now, if Matt has nothing to fear, then uh, there's no reason for him to fear Leaving us alone. You're a strange man, Mr. Cutting. Yesterday, you proposed an attack upon me, a lie which you knew wouldn't work. Today, you demand that I have Matt Wilson present, and then you send him away. You're not a fool. Neither am I. But I still don't understand what it is you really want. I told you yesterday, I want Matt Wilson. Don't be ridiculous. That report you got on Wilson's account showed an unusual amount of money going in, or going out or going in and out. You mean to say you don't know? It makes no difference. It's only the strange activity of the account that matters. That lie we discussed yesterday about your oil leases being confiscated. The reason you were puzzled was because I wasn't speaking to you. I was telling Matt that I knew. It's not a lie. What are you talking about? You're going to lose them. In fact, the deal's already been made. By whom? The strange activity of Matt Wilson's account. Walter Green was also not a fool. He was banking his life on exposing Wilson. He couldn't move fast enough. He didn't have your connections. Is this another lie? Of course it is. Like the lie that Green's plane was sabotaged to keep him quiet about the ships he'd blown up. Green was murdered because he was on his way up here to report to you about Wilson. Where did you get these facts? You've got the same facts. You've always had them. We just read them differently. Green had to run when he got on that plane. And Wilson had to find him and kill him. I don't believe you. You're a fool. You've been running an empire without laws for so long, you've begun to think you're king of a mythical empire. I'm not asking you for anything. I'm giving you the only chance you've got to save your skin. Now, you've made Matt Wilson a big man in your organization. A man from whom you said yourself you had no secrets. A man you said yesterday was just like you, a liar, a cheat, a murderer. Can you afford that man, Mr. Villain? Even if I'm lying to you, can you afford Matt Wilson anymore? 
How do I know that you're telling me the truth? This is Walter Green's affidavit. Matt told me it didn't exist. I know. Did he also tell you had a girl killed because you thought she had it? It's not like Matt to bungle the situation twice. Unless he's desperate. Where did you get this? What difference does it make? It's in Green's own handwriting notarized one week after the plane crash. It was to be delivered to you in the event of his death. He's dead. But I can't do anything. Matt's the one who does things. I'll swear that I saw Wilson kill Green. After he's arrested, you do nothing. Absolutely nothing. If Wilson's arrested, he'll talk. Of course he will. But who'll listen? Who'll take the word of a murderer against Mr. Kurt Villain? And even if someone does believe him, what can they really do? Remember, you're outside the law. Which of us calls the police? You or I? You. Because you've begun to suspect him of this terrible crime, this cold-blooded murder of your trusted employee, Mr. Green. Then I identify him. You and I don't even have to communicate. We never have to see each other again. couldn't afford to have him arrested, could you, Valerian? He knew too much about you. He was going to kill you. I know, you saved my life. But you can't say Wilson wanted to kill me. You'll have to explain why. And that'll hang you. We remain with our original story. Tell me. I've been suspecting for some time that Matt Wilson was sabotaging my ships, killing innocent seamen, destroying a plane that crashed with its pilot and co-pilot in order to murder a man who could have exposed him. I could do nothing until I found an eyewitness who had seen him brutally destroy Walter Green. I faced him with it, threatened to call the police. He reached for his gun, and I shot him. It's beautiful. Who's the eyewitness? You, of course. I was with a girl called Dominique when it happened. You were right. I couldn't purge a man's life away, not even his. You tricked me. You tricked me, didn't you? Everything you said was a lie. Green coming to see me. Wilson plotting against me. That affidavit. It was all a lie. I don't know, Mr. Villain. I really don't know. 